Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to you all. I hope you had a great uh, week. I hope you had a great Friday. It's a pleasure to interact with you, uh, to talk to you uh, this evening. My name is Jonan Kanwanaho and I'm the Managing Director at Janaki Holdings Limited. And at Janaki Holdings Limited, we do money lending. We give loans at affordable rates in a very short time. And we look forward to uh, working with you and serving you. It's a pleasure to have you this Friday for our business talk. We usually have it from 5.30 to 6 for 30 minutes every Friday of the week. And I uh, interact with you, I uh, share with you what the Lord has put on my heart and some of the topics suggested by you colleagues. So I always look forward uh, to interact with you and share with you. So it's once again a pleasure to have you today. Today we have quite an interesting topic. Cow fattening as a business. Now I realize that we've been having these sessions um, and they have been very intentional. We did the bull fattening. I know a bull is a cow, yes, but it's different. We did um, bull fattening reloaded previous week uh, on Friday. And now we are at it again with cow fattening as a business. Cow fattening as a business. So today's topic is quite interesting because they are very different things. One of my colleagues was asking me that, you know, how different is cow fattening? So one of my colleagues was asking me, Jonathan, how different is it from the topic that you shared on the other week, which is bull fattening as a business? I told him a bull is different from a cow. It's different. And the dynamics in there, the key things you have to look at are very, very different. It's different if you're fattening a bull. It's different if you're fattening a cow. There are two different things. One of the key dynamics that change a lot is the stocking cost. Now for a cow is an animal, I could say, that has already produced. If it has produced, it qualifies to be a cow. So it's what I'm talking about now. And it's different from a bull. It's different from a bull. So one of the dynamics where it differs from a bull and all, especially in the area of business, is that first of all, the stocking cost that you put in bull fattening, that you, you use to stock the bulls, is different from the starting cost or the cost of production that you use to stock a cow. Whereas you're looking at 850 or 800 in that range for stocking a bull, for a cow, you might have to look at 1.5 million to 1.8 based on the cow you're buying. So the stocking cost is different. Now, meaning that whereas you can stock more bulls with the little 10 million that you have or 20 million, you can stock less cows because the amount of money that you need to buy them is higher, slightly higher. Almost double, actually. But the principle is the same. You're fattening the cow, meaning that you're buying this cow while it is not looking as fat, or while it is not as fat, then graze it for some time, then it gets fat, then you sell it off. I related it with an example of buying a shirt. You buy a shirt from downtown at 10,000, you bring it on Camp Kampala Road, maybe Grand Imperial, you sell it at 50,000 or 30,000. So the difference is the 10,000 that you used to buy the shirt and the, and the 30 that you sold it, which is 20,000. And if you incorporate in the other costs of rent and you know, movements and all that, you might end up with profits of about 10,000. 
So same applies to cow fattening. Meaning that you buy this cow at 1.5 million, then you graze it for a period of time, then sell it off, and then at maybe 2 million or 2.5 million, then the difference that you make is what you consider as your gross profit before you deduct the expenses that are involved. Because there are quite a number of expenses that are involved in stocking that cow, for example, transporting it, it's not that where you buy it from is where you're going to keep it. You still have to move it from that area where you bought it to your farm. So there are some costs that are involved. So cow fattening is a trade. But it requires significantly higher amount of money that, than you'd use to stock a bull. So if you're going to buy, because there are, there are three categories of cows, you know, the, the level, of, the level of, of, of size, how they look like. For example, if there's medium, there's medium, there's the one which is very, very malnourished, not even below medium, and there's one which is fat. So three categories. So the one which is very, very malnourished, you can only get that during the dry season. You know, for example, in some of the districts that have that dry spell, where a cow that would have gone for a cost of 1.5 million, it goes to as low as 700 or 800,000. Now, there are those people who look for such cows because they want to maximize. Because if such a cow is bought and you graze it for like maybe four or five months, it can get to as much as 2 million. And you can imagine if you stocked at 700,000, you'll make a whooping 800, 1 million extra. But there are some risks that come along with that. There are some risks you have to look at. Because if the cow is so malnourished, to the extent that if it were, if it were to go for 1.5, it's now 700, it means it's badly off. Meaning that if you're moving it for a long period of time, if the distance you're moving it is long, there's a likelihood of losing that cow. So you've literally lost almost all the 700,000 you put in there. So the risk is too high. But even when it reaches the farm, it might die from, the, from your farm. So I'd advise my, my friends, and I've always advised uh, some of the guys that I mentor in this area, I, I'll tell them, go for a medium, but not the one which is very, very malnourished. You do not have to wait for a dry season to start doing your project. As you're looking for that, for that malnourished, real malnourished cow. No. That is a poverty mentality. Because if you're going to run a project, budget for it, plan for it, and you don't have to look for the worst of the worst. But even a person who is going to buy a shirt that he's going to sell at Kampa Road at 50,000, when he has bought at, at, at 10,000, he might not have to look at the very, very worst. He might not have to look at the one that is, that is too, too badly off that can go for 3K or 5K. Because even that one of, of 3K or 5K, if you take it to Kampa Road, you might not fetch the 50,000 that, that, that you want to get from, from it. So the same applies to that cow. You might not have to look at the very, very malnourished one. Because there are risks involved, and the risks are very high, with the likelihood of losing all the money that you've put in, including the transport. If you bought it 700,000, and it's too, too malnourished, plus the transport costs, you might find the cow is, ends up in about maybe 950 or 800,000. And you can imagine, behold, if you take it to your farm and it dies, you've lost the, literally the 800,000 that you've used. Plus your time. You know, sometimes you don't compute the time, but time is also of essence. Because you'd have invested your time to do something else productive. So I've always advised my, my clients, I've always advised my mentees that please, if you're not ready for the project, don't go for it. Like one of my friends who says a statement, if, if you cannot afford a lawyer for a transaction that is above 50 million, then you cannot afford that transaction. You cannot afford that purchase. Because if you're still cutting, quarters, because, still cutting corners because you want to save 200,000, 100,000 of the lawyer, or you want to save the 500,000 for a lawyer, then you cannot afford that transaction yet. You cannot afford that buy yet. If you're buying land worth 100 million, and you do not involve a lawyer, and you want to do papers yourself, and you do not know the consequences, you cannot afford that transaction yet. 
soka we setting first set yourself So same applies to this business. If you're going to wait for the dry season to start stocking the cow of, of 700,000 as, as a malnourished cow, the risks are too high. You have not afforded that project yet, my brother, my sister. So you either look for a partner or look for some bit of equity or step up your thing or sit on it, save a little bit, then you can get to that level and then you start doing business. So the second category is the medium, and that's where I emphasize most of, of my clients, my, my mentees, that I walk this journey with. Look at a medium. A medium cow goes for about 1.5 to 1.8 million. As a, stock, as, as, as a stocking cost. 1.5 to 1.8 million as a stocking cost. Now, this amount is higher than the bull because for it, the period, whereas you're looking at five months for a bull to fatten, this one you're looking at three months, which is a shorter period of time. So meaning that you can trade and the frequency is very high. So you can sell as you stock and sell as you stock. So if you're looking at a medium cow, you have to look at that budget. The same principle that I shared on the bull fattening, same applies here. There are leakages in the stocking. You either have to get a person you trust very, very well that you'll bank on to stock for you or to buy for you or source for you or you involve yourself. And buying in plenty or buying in bulk, if you want 20 cows you buy from one farm, is advant advantageous. Because you'll have minimized your stocking costs, especially if you're personally involved and you have a very tight schedule and you don't have a and you don't have plenty of time at your hand to do the things yourself. So buying one one might not be an option, if, especially if, if your schedule does not allow you to, to move back and forth and the costs involved. Because you can imagine if you have to drive maybe to Zimbabwe or to Chiruhura to stock one cow and then come back and then restock and... What is that? Because you're burning fuel, you're burning time, you're getting tired, you're risking your life on the road. It's too much. You even rather risk to, to get a person who can be trusted, then he helps you with the stocking, or you identify one person that you can buy from at one go, and then you stock, and then you settle your thing. You start running your project. So advise medium cows. They take shorter time, but the capital that you have to invest in is slightly high. It's slightly high. The return on investment is quite amazing as well. Might be, it's actually higher than the bulls. Because if you invest and stock account 1.5 million and graze it for three months, most likely you could sell it to as much as 2 million or 2.5 million. So if you compute in the expenses involved, because people have the assumption that if I buy a cow at, at, at 1.5, then sell it at 2 million, I'll have straight made 500,000. Not knowing that this person used airtime to call the person to stock for him. Not, not knowing that this person has a person who is grazing these cows. Not knowing this person has to drench. Not knowing that this person has to, to do the injections, the warm, the drenching, the warming, yes, and the injections. Not knowing that this person was uh, moved this cow from point A to point B. Not knowing that this person still there are lots of costs that are involved and this is where i help my clients this is where i help my men mentees because I've, I've i've done a tested excel that has the costs that you have to look at before you even start the project so that you do not burn your hands because some of these lessons are very very expensive now you can imagine if you wanted to save and you bought those malnourished cows at 700,000 700, and you perhaps got a loan of maybe 7 million and 10 cows are gone or 3 of the 10 cows are gone. You're out of business right away and you still have to service this loan. But had you made a portion of money or had you made a little cost that you have to make to get a person who is experienced in this area and he supported you, you'd have survived. 
So sometimes we think we are saving and yet we are not saving in any way. We are not. You are basically planning to fail because you are learning by experience which lessons might be very expensive to the extent that they can actually get you out of business. Some of these lessons are very expensive. My mentor always amuses me. He says, Jonathan, you're trying to save this, this two million that you used to come and consult me. But do you know how much I save you? And I understand. I was looking at this amount of money thinking that it was high. But I learned the hard way. Thank God I didn't sink totally. And then I had to, I had to repent and say, you know what? Let me invest. Let me consult. Because some of these guys have paid the price of the experience. They, they have paid the price of, of the lessons they've learned. So they share with you the experience, they walk with you the journey, give you the experience. What so you want to assess yourself, am I really ready for this project? And I said some, some of you guys are manning some of the investment clubs, are manning big circles, and you're wondering what ventures to invest in. So you need to have tested, you need to have had this Excel, you need to have had these, these numbers very clearly, and then you can actually launch in. Then you can actually commit your members' money in such a project. Because you didn't want to risk people's money on a venture that you've not tested. You could even first walk the journey with me, and then after, you can think of investing. Move to the farm, look at how things are done, look at the time of stocking, you look at the stocking levels and then the selling and all that. So by the time you enter the project, you're fully calculated, you know your numbers, and by God's grace, you can walk it through and you can move it through successfully. So there, there are lots of considerations you have to, to, to consider or you have to take on. There are lots of considerations. So medium cows, I emphasize, medium cows are the ones you're supposed to be considering and not the cheapest of the cheapest. But the medium cows, graze them for three months and sell them off. Whereas we're talking about uh, doing the pens for, for the bulls to fatten, the option for uh, having these medium cows in a pen might be tricky. I've personally not done it, so I cannot recommend on something I've not done. But I'd still, why not? You can try it out and learn by experience. But I've not tried it out. Because first of all, the cows need a bit of space. Secondly, I've been doing them on free range. But if you're to cage them, that means the feed that they consume is not commensurate. It's way higher than the feed you could use for the bulls. So meaning that you have to put in a lot of money to buy the feed. And then three, they are too, too prone to diseases than the bulls or the steers. So there are risks involved that could deter you from uh, stalking these cows for fattening. So the, the, the factors, the risks involved are deterrent for you to stalk them. So I advise that if, if you're doing cow fattening, it is advisable that you can still do the free range bit. But the carrying capacity of the land, just like the bulls, still, still, still exists, it's still the same. If you have 20 acres of land, the carrying capacity use the rule of the thumb. For every one cow, you look at 1.5 to 2 acres. For those who have done electric engineering, you know the rule of the thumb or who have read about it. For one cow that you want to graze, you need 1.5 to 2 acres. Of land. So meaning that if you have 20 acres of land, you're looking at 10 cows. The rule of the thumb. You're looking at about 10 cows. You know why I'm saying this is that sometimes you want to get a lot of profits. You get 20 cows, you want to graze them in 20 acres of land. What you're doing is wrong. The project is going to fail, it's going to collapse from the word go. Stop it. 
you need to look at the carrying capacity of the land. And even this, this ratio that I've told you about, you have first look at the carrying capacity of the land, the area in which you're going to graze these cows, stalk these cows. Because some areas are as, as, um, as semi-arid, they get dry very fast. So you might have to look at maybe one cow to three acres. See, But if you're hiring land, in case you don't have the land, you need to look for the best of the best of the lands so that you can have good returns from your project. So that you can get something from your project. Not just something, but good returns. And I emphasize, because I'm in that category, where you have, you, you're mandated or you're given responsibility to invest on behalf of a circle, to invest on behalf of your investment club with a lot of trust. And men, you didn't want to let down your colleagues. You didn't want to let down yourself because you're also part of the members. Meaning that if you lose the money, you're also losing in a way. So that's why you have to do your games very, very properly. You have to do your computations and your numbers very, very well before you actually do the stalking, before you enter the project. Especially if the resources do not belong to you. Especially if, if you're using borrowed funds. Especially if you're using a loan. Not that if it's your personal money, you have to be negligent, but maybe that you can sink and come back. Because also the, loss, the lesson I learned, I learned the hard way, yes, but it was my personal money. So I could afford to lose a chunk and still come back by God's grace. But you might find that you got a loan to start this very, very first project in your life. And behold, you crash. You might never come back. That's why I emphasize to double check. That's why I emphasize to get someone who is experienced in that area to lead you through, to walk with you the journey so that you can do your investment. So then the third category is the flattened cow itself. You've been grazing this cow for a period of three months. Now it has flattened and it's time to sell. The principles that I advised uh, in the, the bull fattening is the same principle. We are living in a free market economy. Whereas uh, Myers can buy your cow at, at 2 million, someone else, maybe Dockers, can buy your cow at 2.5 million. But you need to know or have the contact of the highest bidder. We are living in a free market economy. So after you fattened your cow, it, it, would, it would be to your disadvantage to sell the cow at 2 million, yet you could have sold it at 2.5. So what does that one call for? Having the contacts. This is when your social capital comes into play. This is when your colleagues who have done the business come into play. This is when the, the, the big time advices from your mentor or from your advisor come in handy. Because then you can be connected to the market that can offer you good returns. Someone could even buy your cows if they are long-horned cows or very nice cows could buy them for dowry. I've seen guys. He has cows, he bought them at 1.5 million, but because they look good, someone buys for dowry. A cow he would have sold at 2.5 million, the person is offering 3 million. What a deal. But you need to have the contact of that person to close that deal. You need to have the contact. And the contact will not find you on, on the road. You have to look it out. You have to check for it. You have to search for it. Yes, you've done the prerequisites, you've done the, the stocking, you've done the costings, you've done, and behold, your cow has fat, and now is the time to sell. Selling comes, you have to maximize the point as well. Even in the selling, there's a leakage. Things of calling someone, you know, phone farming, you're calling someone at the farm. Sell them for me, boss. You can't source for contacts. You can source for contacts. And I still insist it's pertinent that you sell them at one go. Because not all the cows are the same size. Not all the cows look good. They look all the same. They, they might not all of them look good. So meaning, 
you also would like to do an average, just like I told you in the bull fattening bit. The one that doesn't look as fat might have to be compensated for the one that looks very, very good. And you sell them average at one go. And you have your, your returns. So it's advisable that you sell them in bulk as you stocked, because it also helps you the, with your computations of your calculations. You need to get the stock off so that you can restock. Get the stock off so you can, you can restock. By the moment you start carrying over and over, the project gets diluted. And you might not realize the returns you'd have realized if you're doing the stocking and then selling off at one go. One last bit that I'd like to share with us is that the, the cows have a tendency because when they are pregnant, they do not show that they are pregnant. Whereas it, it, is, it is five months pregnant, you might not know. You might not know. So you graze it for three months, behold, the thing gives, the thing produces when it's still on the farm, and that's a loss. This is the time I was discussing with one, with one of my mentees, and he said, but that's, Junan, they, they, it was one cow, but they are now two. Isn't that profitable? I said, no. Why? Because what you're looking at is not the numbers. Every cow that produces is almost a loss to you. Not even almost, it's a loss. Because it did not stock this cow to produce. It means that if it produces, if it were going for 2.5 million, it is going to cut back to 1.5. Back to even less, maybe 1.3, because it's no longer medium. And now you have to graze the young one. It has to step up the figure to that. Now time is moving. So the challenge that you could, the risks that are involved with the cow fattening is that they might produce when you do not know. So you need, be, you need to be very, very critical of the cows you're stalking so they do not produce from the farm when you've just talked to them. So you need to time them in a way that by the time they, they, they are to think about producing, they're already out of your crowd. They're already out of your farm. You could even sell to someone who is interested in multiplying the numbers. Because we are talking business, it's not about numbers. It's about return on investment. So you're not grazing these cows for numbers, return on investment. So whereas you had a mind of thinking that if it produces, that's to your advantage. No, it's not to your advantage. Because the cow you're, you're planning to sell at 2.5 after fattening it, after grazing it to fatten, now has chopped to 1.5 million or 1.3 million. And yet it's stocked with 1.5. Now you can imagine how long will the young one take to compensate that figure. Because you can imagine if you're going to sell at 2.5 million, now the thing has cut back to 1.5, the stocking cost. And that is that is a bare minimum I'm being, you know. That's the bare minimum because it can go to 1.3. So the difference of about 800,000. This difference you'd even have used it to stock a, a particular bull or top on it and buy another cow. So you can imagine the time it will take for this young one to grow to that level to compensate that figure. Now that aside, the milk you're going to get from this cow might not be as good because you did not stock a direct cow because your intention was not to have the milk. Your intention was to fatten, not to have the milk. So meaning that you have to wait more three months or four months or five or eight or even one year to, to, for it to get fat again. You're going to feed it more. You're going to, it's going to occupy a space of another cow you'd have stocked. Lots of things come into play. So there are several details that I share with my mentees that I cannot share here because of the time. So you need to be strict with your projects. Where the cow is going to produce, where the cow is fat like how it looks beautiful like how, be strict with your project, let it move as planned. But in this aspect, you need an accountability partner. And I'm here to help you. Only if you can meet my fees, because I cost my knowledge. I cost my work. I cost my practicals. So if you can afford, well and good. We can get moving. 
because you need an accountability partner not to get uh, tempted to keep the cows on the farm and yet you're meant to be phasing them out. I appreciate your time for showing up for today's talk. I hope you've picked one or two things. I've always emphasized if you pick one or two things and implement them, I'll have joy in my heart. That will make me glad because you'll have valued my data, you, you, you'd have valued my, my time, you'll have even have valued your time as well. But if you just pick this information and just keep it for the sake of keeping, it will be unfortunate. It will hurt me, just like it will hurt you. So I thank you for your time. Um, thank you for showing up. Have a great uh, evening. Have a great Friday. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you so much. COVID should not stop us from progressing, from doing business. Stand firm and continue to stand firm. Trust in the Lord and get moving. Don't wait. You know, now the excuse is COVID time, COVID time, COVID time. Now is not the excuse. That's no excuse. Proceed to do business. Proceed to stock your cows. Proceed to do what you're meant to do irrespective of COVID time. There is always a way. Others are getting rich in this COVID time. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. God richly bless you. Thank you.